represent still um, Italy, and I want to answer your question in a way like, um, as you ask about uh, UN, UN does not has any right to um, to mix with Italy or to deal with any problem of any country until this country would not ask a help. For example, if uh, Italy has any problem, and if I do not want our country to not want, for example, to to you know, or UN to solve this problem, so or UN cannot come and cannot support us because we don't want it depends on the country. If the country wants the help of UN, then they can come and they can help. And can I ask a question in a second? Does it mean that the head of the state should ask for the help or like for, for who should ask for the help then? Because no, you are for example you are a member of UN, yeah? And you have any problem and if you need this help and if you want UN to help you, you will go to UN. You will ask the help from UN. And of course UN will have such conference and then they will decide how they can do the help. Okay, and if a country does not ask for a help if they are like making this genocide and they're like kind of satisfied with it and they don't want someone to interfere in their internal politics, what then? You yeah, cannot do it. You yeah, cannot do it. Right. And what about the I'm just gonna follow up on that. Do you think that the that the UN should expand those powers, uh, both in the definition of what is genocide and and its powers of uh, to to become involved. For example, uh, it's not technically genocide, but in the last uh, 20 years, uh, nearly 900 journalists like us have been murdered around the world. In some countries, it's a lot worse than us. Like Russia, Russia, 52 people, 52 journalists have been murdered. Um, what what should the UN do to protect these groups that are not ethnic, are not you know, but they are they are they're nonetheless dead. being uh, destroyed uh, somewhat systematically by by enemies of you know of humanity. I guess you could say. Should the UN get more involved in those sorts well, of issues? I think we uh, we should help to such people because these are those uh, people from whom we get the main sources and who, for example, really put the issue, who really found the issue on which UN can gather and they can solve this problem. I don't know in which way we can help them, but maybe we could decide in conflict and try to help them. I'm representative of the Russian Federation, and I would like to say, do we have a certain number of people that needs to be killed in order to do something in the UN? I think there is, we, we don't need to have a number, certain amount of people to get killed in order to make an action. People should face the fact that when genocide is starting, they should, they should immediately work, and Security Council are the ones who need to decide what to do with the nation, with the country that are doing these actions. Let us say, for instance, in Kyrgyzstan, genocide happened, we need to admit it, and Security Council needed to be there at the moment when it started, not when thousands of people were killed, not when 10,000 of people were killed, just the beginning. When it comes to hundreds, people need to act. UN needs to act when it comes only to hundreds, because otherwise it expands really, really fast. From, from 100 people, it, it may go on 10,000 people, 100,000 people. Why do we need such kind of victims in our country, in our world? That's why United Nations needs to take an urgent action in the beginning of the genocide before it started. That's why we don't have a certain amount of people who need to be killed in order for the United Nations to start the actions. I have a question, and it's rather practical. That's a good answer, definitely, but how do you imagine 193 member states? How does the UN, how can it separate us? We just on the scene everywhere, so to keep an eye and be on time to help when they well, firstly, if the first one comes, we said that internal conflicts, that the United Nations do not interfere with internal conflicts. But when in the country the other nations are get killed, that's what we define genocide, why the United Nations cannot look at it? It's an amount of people, it's another nation. It's not even the nation of the country. That's why they need to act. It's, I think it's very visible, not, not only me, but the Russian Federation would think that it's very visible when people, when different nations get killed in the, in the country. You could have Uzbek people, again I'm using this example, you could have uh, Uzbek ki people killed in the Kyrgyz territory, then it's visible. Since Uzbek people live there peacefully for a couple of years, 
The United Nations should see the fact that something is wrong in there. The United Nations will know that there is, but they don't take action right away because they think it's still an internal problem. They should not. When, uh, when hundreds of people are killed, they need to take actions right away because otherwise the number of victims will expand. Thank you. Which uh, decided uh, to, for example, again, abuse the one country if they make a handled actions, a genocide the one nation. And uh, of course, uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a section, economical section, they, for example, limit uh, the country uh, in international trade. And unfortunately, this uh, kind of measure, it's helped. Uh, the country, it have to, uh, it have to admit that they have a, a genocide and they have to uh, make some points and uh, make uh, measures to stop a genocide of their people. Ну, в первую очередь, если мы затрагиваем вопрос о том, что должна ли ООН вовремя реагировать на акты проявления геноцида, то мы должны сказать, что в первую очередь существует государство, которое обязано защищать свое собственное население от таких проявлений. Международное сообщество в этом случае играет только вспомогательную роль. Однако, если государство не способно защитить, свое население. Только тогда международное сообщество и то э, с помощью мирных средств, в первую очередь, должно регулировать это, должно решить эту проблему. When you would like to work against the genocide, uh, they shouldn't be looking for the number of people, how many would, uh, was killed, not 100, not 50, not 10, but it should be the, to the character, how was the pe people ki killed. Even 10 people was killed on the character of genocide, so the United Nations <coughs> should act on this. And uh, our delegation, and I hope all countries who are here, we see to uh, United Nations as the main and the one, the first uh, institute of international relation which guarantee uh, peace to every country. And of course, the uh, United Nations have and should uh, at the same time uh, make action against uh, genocide if it's going in some country and uh, uh, for the coming the solution, uh, we have the uh, Security Council uh, which are responsible to the uh, security and the peace uh, has said in the United States, is there a, a U.S. delegate here? Okay. Uh, you might want to respond to this. Uh, others might have comments also. Um, some have referred to abortion in the United States as genocide because most of the uh, children that are aborted uh, before they're born are black. Um, and, and the uh, most abortion clinics, or many abortion clinics, are in the black neighborhoods. Uh, should this be, you know, should the UN get involved? We were talking about uh, maybe a million black children aborted every year. That's a lot of children. Кроме того, говоря, например, о политике к непосредственно чернокожему населению, это также говорит неверно, потому что на сегодняшний день у нас существует довольно-таки хорошая социальная политика, и также предоставляются льготы, социальные льготы именно к черному чернокожему населению. И, в принципе, у нас демократии равны права между черными и белыми, поэтому нет смысла говорить, что у нас идет какая-то дискриминация расовая или, или этническая. Some of them, pretty close, you know, could would be viable if they uh, were not aborted, and and uh, the government, in essence, uh, uh, facilitates it, makes it free, makes it encourages them not to have children, and if they're not going to take care of them, and all this sort of stuff, and it's concentrated a lot in the black communities. Да, вот я с моим профессором говорит он о миллионах детей чернокожих, да, то есть которые даже были убиты до задолго до рождения, потому что как бы к ним обращались к людям, родителям, родителям обращались таким месседжем, что если вы не сможете воспитать, вы не сможете поднять на ноги ребенка, то лучше его даже не рожать. И как бы вот так. И бесплатно правительство предоставляет бесплатно как бы вот эту вот систему по совершению. Уничтожение народа еще в зародыше. Да. Да. 
тем самым оно увеличивает рост абортов. Именно вот афроамериканцы. Афроамериканцы на территории Да, да, нельзя сказать, что у нас, конечно, низко, низко сорота и так далее. У нас действительно присутствует высокое число именно абортов совершенно. Но не думаю, что это может быть именно проводимая такая специальная политика, потому что у нас проводится именно поддержка также матерей и так далее. И это все-таки представляется государственным председателем работы. Материал. То есть здесь уже какие-то должны быть другие фигурироваться причины под прикрытием. Может быть, чтобы мы принуждали государство, принуждали семьи отказываться от детей. Это должно быть наше предприятие. So we want to thank you for this press conference. It was a great exercise for our delegates. So let's uh, congratulate and dear delegates, уважаемые делегаты, приглашаем вас посетить семинар, называемый Anti AIDS Day, День против СПИДа. Буквально на 15 минут. Через 15 минут заседание обоих комитетов продолжится. И ждем вас на этом месте. А пока прошу пройти в кофе.